<sighs> the Pyramid Song by Radiohead. Where do I begin with this one? The first thing I'm going to say is this video is from a guitarist's point of view. If, if you've seen my cover of this song, then I'm going to talk you through the way that I approach the chords, the way that I approach the rhythm, and just some points about the song that I find really interesting. When I first heard this song, I expect my reaction was very similar to a lot of other musicians. And the reason for that is, when we listen to music, sometimes it's difficult not to dissect it <laughs> and really analyse it and instantly know the chord formula or the time signature and make comparisons with that song to every other song that you've learned previously. With this song, it's very difficult to do that. It's on its own. I've never heard anything with this time signature, or at least with this rhythm structure or rhythm frame, whatever you want to call it. The chords themselves are not too difficult if you simplify them. We just have F sharp, G, A, um, and then the other chords are F sharp minor and E major. Now those are the basic major and minor triads. The actual piano part has a lot more suspension to it. Uh, it. They kind of hang there without being resolved or they linger in between each other. They use notes that that don't quite resolve the way that you'd expect. Uh, movements like from G to F sharp, they'll keep the G hanging over to the F sharp. The other interesting point about the actual chords is um, they're all tied together by one note. There's a little bit of pitch axis going on, which is like my favourite term ever. And the note that links all of these chords together is F sharp. So let's look at these chords and see where F sharp fits within each one. So we'll use this F sharp. So that's in F sharp. Obviously it's the root. Then if you put an F sharp in a G chord, it makes it G major 7. F sharp in an A chord. This is A major with F sharp in it. A6. Then what were the other ones? So F sharp minor. F sharp's the root again. And E with an F sharp in gives us E add 9. So when you look at each chord separately, it's difficult to tell what key it's in, uh, but that one note is the one that ties them all together. That gives it its structure. It revolves around that F sharp note. What you'll notice from my cover is I kept it simple as much as I could. When to move through those chords is a completely different thing. The rhythm and the time signature is a lot more difficult to wrap your head around, but there is a pattern to it. Did you spot the pattern then? I'm going to take my fretting hand away so that you can see what my right hand is doing a bit more clearly or listen to it. The rhythm that my right hand is playing is always short, short, long, short, short. Repeat. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 long. Short, 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 long. Short, short. And then back. What makes it difficult is the fact that the chords don't change at the same rate as the <laughs> as the bars, like that's in 4-4, that fits perfectly in 4-4, but because you're changing on chords and really uh, like odd beats, it's almost as if your left hand and right hand are playing two entirely different songs. <laughs> the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the reason why it's called the Pyramid Song. 
And I have read that um, a lot of the lyrics and the theme of the song was inspired by the Egyptian Book of the Dead, which is interesting, but I don't know how much truth is in that. A lot of other people say that if you look closer at the music themes, the notes themselves, and the rhythm, you can see a lot of symmetry there that um, gives you the same outline of a pyramid, the same shape as a pyramid. So <laughs> let's look at the chords themselves. So we've got F sharp, G, A, and then they descend. So you can, you can see how that can be uh, looked at as a pyramid, because the notes ascend, and then they descend on the same path. So it's not rhythmically symmetrical, but the shape of the notes, the way the notes ascend and descend gives you, you know, uh, an up and down pattern a bit like a pyramid, I suppose. I don't know whether I agree with that and how much thought they put into the movement of the the, the chords as to resembling a pyramid. Um, but the rhythm is something else. So the if we break up the rhythm that we play with our right hand into eighth beats, it ends up being one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 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 four, one, two, and, and so on. So it's three, three, four, three, three. Mathematically, you can think of those as four being in the center. So that's the base of a square. Then you have a total of four three-sided shapes, which make a pyramid. Again, I don't know whether we are stretching this to find answers that are not there, but I wouldn't be surprised, uh, especially with Radiohead. This wouldn't be the first time that mathematics has been involved with writing music. If you're aware of the Fibonacci sequence or the golden ratio, there's lots of interest in music that's revolved around that. But that's my take on the song, my viewpoint of everything that I find interesting about it. I hope you found this video interesting. And if you have, don't forget to hit like, leave a comment, let me know what you think. And subscribe for more. Subscribe!